Hey there, I'm Tiffany Youngren, host of Next Up Nation, where we help podcasters and YouTubers with vision become preeminent thought leaders in their industry. You are about to have the incredible opportunity to listen as we dig into the why, who, and what of a podcaster show. Then at the end, we will identify one powerful how, one action that she can take for results in the next 30 days. So I am so excited to welcome my friend and podcaster, Sam Garcia, host of Business as a Magical Practice. Hey, Sam. Hi, thank you so much for having me, Tiffany. Oh, you're so welcome. Thanks for being here. And just a little bit about Sam. Um, business or her podcast, Business as a Mag Magical Practice. It's released 46 episodes from August 5th, 2020. Is that right, Sam? Is that, was that when you started? Yeah. And then to the time of this recording, which is May 12th, 2021. Sam Garcia is the founder and lead marketing strategist of Dirty Alchemy Digital Marketing. With the help of her team, she designs and runs multiple six-figure online program launches for magical seven-figure businesses that are changing the world. Well, Sam, uh, why did you start your podcast in the first place? What was your vision for it? I mean, I started it just as I wanted to. <laughs> Uh, that's the, the honest answer. I knew all of the, the benefits that it could have for my business. And it was a strategic decision because I knew that I wanted to launch a mastermind uh, the following year. And I hadn't really done much audience building. It wasn't the way that I got new clients. Um, so it was strategic in that way, but really, I just really wanted a podcast. I love listening to podcasts. I don't like social media that much. It's, I don't like reading emails. It's the one way that I really like consuming content. So, um, I just wanted to throw my hat in the ring. Fun. And it looks like, um, you know, I looked through your show and saw a lot of what you're doing. I saw that you do, you do some solo episodes. I love how you bring in some Q and a questions that you get or not Q and a necessarily, but like questions that you get. And just kind of going through those on some episodes and it looks like just things on your mind probably that are coming up with clients and and things like that um, but then also you interview guests as well yeah so it, it it's turned it's turned into about every other episode being an interview with a guest so and everyone every other episode create uh sharing my own thoughts or my own uh concepts doing teaching. And then we have every 11 episodes is what we call our very special episode, which is more casual behind the scenes, doing Q and A from the audience. And so that's really the flow. Oh, I love it. Oh, that's so good. How often do you release? Is it every week? Every Thursday. So every we're Thursday. recording on a Wednesday. Next one comes out tomorrow. <laughs> very good. Oh, I love it. Well, um, first now, uh, as we talked about before, I'm, I want to go through three things first with your show. I want to go through the why, the who, and the what. Uh, talking about, you know, what you're doing, what's working, uh, you know, some challenges. And of course, I've always got thoughts about things. So that gets, you know, brought up as well. One thing I love is you're in marketing and actually we've been a part of the same mastermind. So a lot of it is going to be really familiar with to you. So, uh, so if you're listening and, and you hear Sam and I talking about things and all of a sudden you're like, what the heck was that? Be sure to comment and ask, uh, because it's, especially if I didn't explain it, I'm probably super excited about it. And that's the only reason. So, uh, feel free to ask questions, but Sam, um, so one of the things that I asked before the interview is what is it that you want from your show? And you said that it was to build an audience, which you just mentioned, you, you know, you've got these programs, you want to build this audience around you and then also for creative e expression and joy. So I'm imagining that that probably has a lot to do with that whole, I love podcasts. I want one. <laughs> so, um, is there anything more that you want to talk about as far as the why, like what, is there something that, um, that you want to get out of it. Uh, I'm hearing community, but is there anything you want to add to that? Um, yeah. So it was for strategy wise, it was around um, sharing intellectual property and having a, an external way for me to force myself into consistently developing intellectual property. So by having like, okay, every Thursday, something else has to come out. And the weeks that aren't um, interviews, I actually am sharing new concepts that I'm developing or uh, it, it's, it's forcing me into really um, making those connections in my brain. Cause I consider myself a writer. I consider myself a creative um, and it, it's a way of formally 
packaging it into um, ways that people can actually digest and understand. So that's a part of it. And that's why I was saying of like creative expression and joy. I mean, also just the, the concept behind my podcast. So it's called business as a magical practice. And I, I, I am assuming that my audience is a little bit different than yours. Like, I think there's some crossover, but it's, it's for online business owners. Um, but specifically ones who are consider themselves spiritual, they consider themselves magical, They're, they do meditation every day, or they do rituals every day, or, or they, they follow the moon and they are tuned into manifestation, and they do all of these things to boost their business. All of these practices are to help their business and their life expand and get better. But the, the background idea of the entire podcast is our business is actually a magical practice in and of itself. It is this playground of spiritual growth and soul evolution because like, guess what happens when you have to like learn how to do sales calls and pitch and raise your prices. Like all of the things that come up into us are like, of like, Oh, that can I swear? Yeah. Yeah. No. You can swear. Okay. <laughs> no, you all can. Of that come up, you're like, this is so fucking hard. Like, I don't want to do this. And like doing all the mindset work, doing all of the, um, the like soul integration work to actually process these things. It's, it's just, so it, it it's, um, a way of inviting this larger conversation that is this back and forth between the connection between spirituality and business. Mm, I love it. So really you have like a, a greater vision too. It sounds like kind of your, what we would probably call our zone of genius is really helping people connect the two, like living yeah. out their business as the spiritual expression and as even a tool to inspire spiritual expression within themselves is kind of what I'm hearing. Is that? Yeah. Okay. So that's probably what you get out of it as well. I would it sounds like, and I, I know I, I probably should just say like, I I've been really excited to interview you, but it's true. Uh, first of all, I imagine that people who are listening to the show, number one, you know, we may or may not share an, an audience. So we're going to talk about the who in a minute, but like, I am a devout Christian. Like I love Jesus and stuff like that. And you're like really spiritual in a whole nother way with different, like you bring in people from all these different um, walks and talents in that area and things like that. I, I look through your show so that there's, it's really broad in that whole way of, you know, of, um, being spiritual. So I just want to say, like, I really respect you and, um, I'm really excited to be here and see how I can contribute because, um, I love your passion behind what you do. And at the end of the day, how we do one thing is how we do everything and business. Like we're all human. We're all, you know, doing this, if, if someone's got a podcast, they are visionary and you remind me of somebody who would be like, I love visionaries. Those are my favorite people, <laughs> you know, totally. so I think you have so that's like of- the whole archetype behind my mastermind is like stepping into the visionary CEO. That's the oh, total good. word we use in everything. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Awesome. Well, so that's awesome. So I, I just feel like as much as it's like, wow, how different could we be in the way that we express the spirituality of things. There's a lot that we have in common when it comes to, I only work with podcasters with vision. So yeah. that, that's a huge um, commonality. And, and I just think you're awesome. So there's that too, but oh, um, yeah. <laughs> so why is it, you know, having fun and wanting a podcast and, you know, expressing your creativity, that's awesome. But to have a show that's like long-term, you've got to get more out of your show I, I believe like, um, three out of every five podcasters quit. And so, um, I'm always like reticent about like, oh, I've got this great, you know, like, oh, it just sounds wonderful. Is there more that you could see yourself getting out of this? And and maybe this is where you're growing your clientele plays in, but what do you see yourself getting out of the show that makes it sustainable as far as giving back to I I feel like I kind of have a cheat in the fact that I have a team, so, you know, like I, I have, I, I could come up with the, the episodes. Sometimes the copywriter on my team helps me write episode scripts. So like that makes that part easier. I have someone who is editing the episodes. I have people creating the social media images and putting them out. And like, I, gosh, I, I can't even speak to the what if, if I didn't have support in place already to like actually get everything out that needs to get out to grow the podcast. Um, it would be significantly harder to, um, 
to be consistent. Mm -hmm. So that's a huge part of it. I just want to say that, but in terms of what I actually get out of it, um, beyond just like fun and joy is I have, I've gotten one of my biggest clients from interviewing her on my podcast. Um, I didn't even know this was a thing until I talked to you about this, (laughs) Tiffany. And you're like, no, that's an actual thing that like people have podcasts for that reason. I was like, what? (laughs) So I, I got one of my, like my favorite biggest clients from interviewing her on my podcast. Um, the other one is exactly my intention of wanting to build an audience to fill future online programs. At least half of my, um, at least half of my mastermind came from them listening to my podcast. Like that's what convinced them to join. They formed a relationship with me and they wanted to learn, go deeper and they trusted me. So like it, it, it is fulfilling that purpose. So I, I get a lot out of it just in straight terms of, of clients and business and revenue. Yeah. And that really, I think it's brilliant that you have a team that you valued that early on, because even honestly, even if you were like, oh, I just enjoy having a podcast, it is sustainable because you think about it. If if like for my husband and I, we love going out to eat and I could like, that's not work, you know, (laughs) it's just fun. But if you don't have a way to support it, it, it's not going to keep happening. Like I'm going to have to make dinner or, you know, forage for dinner or something. Um, and so I think with podcasting, I think you hit on something really important is if you're able to either generate a revenue or have something else that's underwriting it, then it makes it a lot more sustainable just for the fun of it. But I love that you're getting clients. And, and I would say too, that even if you don't start your podcast to get clients, what you did is brilliant where you just went, okay, but I can at least try, you know, cause you do, you bring on people who are awesome. So, and fit right within what you're trying to do. So, um, and I then, am so sorry, Tiffany, I, I just want to respond back to the person who I'm supposed to have a call with after to, to confirm that we are pushing this back. So we can't have a longer conversation. Oh, okay. Oh, that right in the middle of this. Uh, okay. You yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> no, that's great. That's great. So are we a go or what, what does your timeline? Yeah, we're good. I can okay. go, I can go an hour longer. Now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we'll, we'll still shoot for keeping it under 90 minutes, but <laughs> so, um, awesome. Yeah. In fact, um, yeah. And like I mentioned before, and if, and as you're listening, the, this first part is so important to me because, and hopefully it's helping everyone who's listening, just getting to really understand, you know, your goals, what you're trying to do, how you're doing it, what works so that at the end, um, we can really identify things that not only help you, but it's going to help other people who are going through similar things. So this is great. Well, and, and to speak to the audience, it took, um, it was four months of consistent weekly, um, episodes before I got dream client from podcast. And it was six months before I, um, I launched my mastermind and had people come in. So I, and I knew that going into it of like, I'm going to, I, I was like, I'm going to start this podcast six months before my, or like even a year, I was actually going to do it a year later so that I can work on building the audience. So I, I was not expecting overnight success from it. It was more of, of this buildup of value and this buildup of relationship. That's it. awesome. Well, and one of the things that I asked you ahead of time too, was, uh, you know, I always go into these. I want to be really clear as far as what is your biggest goal? Are you looking for, I, I've always said profit, but we're actually talking about proceeds because not all it's not always profit. Sometimes it's going right back into the show or yes. going somewhere else. It's a, you know, maybe a nonprofit or something like that. But, um, so if it's proceeds or if it's, you know, preeminence, you're wanting to build your audience, get more known, and build your credibility. Um, And in your case, you said preeminent. So we're really gonna be focusing on that, although it's hard to talk about it without talking about the monetization. So just know I could probably talk about like the monetization for like, you know, two hours (laughs) because I love it. But I will say that um, one of the things that I learned, you know, before I helped other people with podcasts, I did marketing. I was a content marketer and Uh, before I did podcasts, I would, if I was struggling with writing for one of my clients, I would interview them and we would record the interview. And then I would send it to a writer and they would write a blog post. Well, so basically I feel like I'm exactly doing the same thing, only get to do it set to podcasting. Uh, Mm -hmm. And before I started helping other people, you know, the first thing I really nailed down with our first podcast was this content multiplication to get get it out. But then the second part was the monetization, which is what I shared with you. And you were be able to really um, jump on and, and make work for you is that 
um, that idea of having people on your show that you really connect with and that it makes sense that you have a relationship beyond this, because I, even if I didn't want to sell to anybody, I'm building these really great relationships with people. And I, yeah. so I had a podcast for real estate agents and I'll tell you within two months, I got a client like it, it, because I didn't have to release an episode. It was just like, we interviewed, we were like, yeah, you're awesome. They're like, yeah, you're awesome. And we're like, let's work together. Okay. I mean, so it, it's, what's one thing I love about it because it can underwrite the podcast. So then you can build your audience because you have less control over that side. Right. Like, so anyway, that's my little spiel on monetization, but we'll talk about, we'll talk about preeminence. Right. <laughs> so, well, and it's, so it's so important to me because I, I have, and I'm sure you, I'm sure the audience all feels this way. I only want to work with people that I'm obsessed with. Like yeah. maybe I'm taking it to like the next level, but I, like, I really want to work with people that I'm just so enamored by and in love with what they're putting out into the world and love with what they're doing. And I also want that for only, I only want that from out of my podcast guests as well. There, there's more a wider net because I'm also trying to think about what would serve the, my audience, but it's a, it's a really great filter of like, wait, like you have a, a 60 minute conversation with someone and you're like, wait, can we like keep talking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I 100%. Well, and they're honestly the relationships that you get from podcasts. I don't, yeah. I, if, if I never had an audience, I mean, I really, you know, obviously I care about making content. That's great. So hopefully people are attracted to it, but ultimately my relationship with the people that I'm, that are right in front of me is really important. And I feel like you're, you've got that same attitude as well. So that's really cool. Well, so let's talk about the who then for a minute. Let's talk about the who of your audience. And this is so funny. I was coming up to this. I'm like, oh my gosh, um, in marketing terms, we would call this the customer journey at our, in our system, we call it the client, the, um, audience promise. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm sure that you have, because we went through the same exercise. Have you identified who your ideal audience is for your podcast? Honestly, no, I have like an uh, idea in my mind, but I, I haven't actually like sat down and like with my avatar sheet out, like written out all of the details. So no, no, I okay. haven't. Okay. <laughs> you are funny. So we'll just tell like, you who it is though. Yes, but like if I, you're like, if you're no, like looking at the little no. stop points, I'm like, <laughs> we're, we're not going to do the before and after grid. That's like a whole different section of my life. But, um, yeah. but as far as like, <laughs> that, that's, it's, it's so funny. Um, so Dominic, if you're listening, turn, push pause. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So um, can you just tell me who is your ideal audience? It, it, when you imagine someone listening to your show, who is that? Yeah. So in terms of ideal, if I'm trying to, to drill it into who's this ideal person, it is someone who has an established online business or side hustle. Um, a woman who doesn't yet have a team. Uh, maybe she has a VA um, supporting her in her online business. Um, and she's in the uh, life transformation space. So that could be a life coach. That could be uh, a feng shui expert. That could be a um, someone who's, who teaches online courses and programs. I, it, but they're, they're really connected with spirituality and magic they feel tuned into how much control they have over life in the world and so the practices they do within it they they know from somatic experience that what i do with myself how i think how i act it it directly impacts what is is showing reflected back to me in life they are um uh okay with the idea of deities and okay with the idea of, of, um, of witchcraft, like that doesn't freak them out or like make them think that like people are satanic and all of these other things. Um, they are in the U S um, if I had to, I don't think I could drill it into one, one place in the U S um, and they're probably making between 20,000 and a hundred thousand, maybe 150,000 in their, um, in their business or side hustle, but they've, okay. they've already like made money. There was definitely like a, a, like a side avatar of people who are, uh, that are wanting to create an online business or they've like created the structure, but they haven't made any sales yet. That's like another, like a side 
um, avatar, but in terms of the people that I think about when I'm creating, it's like they've already made sales, they already have an established business, and they're just looking to expand in a way that really feels good for them. Okay, awesome. And so when you're talking about that audience, what is the problem that you solve for them? So if they're listening to your show and they tune in every week, you know, once they come to you, you know, there's a problem that they have. And then afterwards, you know, it's, it's changed their life. What, what is that transformation? You know, it's funny. I, I, if I would have told, if you would have asked that a couple of weeks ago, I would have responded differently because of a recent episode that came out that everyone went nuts over. Um, cause a lot of our conversation is around, um, money and making more money in your business and like the different practices you can do for that um or like business structure stuff but i we just came out with a, uh, an episode on time and uh time magic and how to actually do more in less time and i it was insane what feedback i i got from them so i'm realizing that this is actually another piece that we need to be focusing more on is um how to um only be working on things that actually matter for your business, how to not just spiral and do BS tasks that don't actually matter, how to actually like deal with the mind drama so that you're not, um, uh, you're not um, thinking for f- four days about an email that would take you five minutes to write, like those sorts of things. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's just like mental things in the back. So um, the transformation, um, going back to your original question, sorry, I babble a lot. No, that's good. I, I overshare. <laughs> so so. I just like kind of go off in like little corners, but I don't know. People listen to my podcast. So like, I guess it's fine. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> but in terms of the transformation, I, I would say that they feel, um, more solid in the concept that, their spiritual practice and their magic is tangibly affecting their business and that their business is, um, has this higher purpose of helping their soul evolve, helping them become the best version of themselves or like the most authentic version of themselves. Um, and that they can actually, um, uh, become, they can actually become this next level version of themselves through their work in the world and through their business. I'm not sure if that's tangible enough for you, but (laughs) (laughs) you know, it's, it, there's no wrong answers. You know, you know, you know what you're trying to, you know, you know what you're setting out to accomplish. I think, I think what's really important and why I go through this, um, this section right here and really understand the who is that, you know, the audience promise is the content, right? And without a good show, all the amount of promotion that you do doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And I always say like, if you're famous, these rules don't apply. So if you're famous, Sam, are you, I'm not famous enough for that kind of nonsense. So I don't know, maybe you are. Okay. So assuming that neither of us are famous, then we have to really understand what it is that we're promising our audience. And that's similar to having a vision, because if you think about it, when you have your audience promise, when you're determining content or guests or any of it, or what am I going to have with my intro? And you're all, you're always, um, forming it and creating it so that it fulfills the audience promise. So if you said, Hey, I promise you audience that if you listen, if you start now, and then you listen for two months that you are going to just feel free. Like you're going to have more time. You're going to stop focusing on time. Like, really, that's what you're, it sounds to me like you're trying to do is like, so here's how to do more and less time so that that's not, you don't have to care about it. You know, a good example, example of kind of what I'm envisioning, and maybe I've got this wrong and you can tell me in a minute, but is a lot of times people won't talk about money. For example, they'll say, well, I don't want to be obsessed with money. So, you know, all this budgeting and all that. But the fact of the matter is, is if you budget and you pay attention to it, you can put it away and then you don't have to think about it. (laughs) And the same goes for time. And so you started with talking about like these tactics to that really will free them up so that they can recognize that their business is feeding what they're able to do and what they were kind of put on the planet to do. Is that, 
kind of what you're, am I wrong? Am I on? Yeah, it will, it's, I, I, I'm having a hard time <laughs> answering because I hadn't like gone into it. I just kind of like, what's a, this is where the creative expression comes in of like, yeah. like, I, like, what are the things that I feel like would be useful for my people to hear? And mm-hmm. then going into that, and it always has to do with business and magic like that. Like it always has to do with that, but the, it, there's larger topics around it. And then I, I when we're, I was also thinking that in terms of the guests that I bring on, we're usually talking about specific tools, like whether it's astrology or tarot or numerology or feng shui or whatever, we're usually either talking about different tools that you can use in order to to better your business and in whatever way that applies or interviewing people who have multiple six, uh, usually women owned spiritual online businesses that are already at the multiple six figure, seven figure, multiple seven figure level. And just like looking at the, like the total behind the scenes of like, okay, what did you do in the first year? Okay. How did you actually actually expand? And just trying to fully understand and go into the the reality. Cause there's a lot of at least with my market, like Instagram is, is generally mm-hmm. where everyone is at. And there's so many um, misconceptions of what it actually, life is actually like as a business owner on Instagram. Like even the ones who are super authentic, they're like, you, you don't get the, you don't get the nights that you're up until 5 a.m. because you're freaking out about a page going down or someone talking badly, or you having to increase your price and freaking out about it. Um, so trying to go into those two, um, mm-hmm. but I'm, yeah, I, yeah. I the, currently haven't thought about it because like, I'm all over the place in terms of what my, <laughs> my episodes well, are on. <laughs> it, I guess, I guess, and I don't expect that we're going to like hammer out your audience promise right now. That's again, that's like a whole process, but I always like to touch on it. Just the, the biggest thing, if I could leave you with anything on this topic, it would be that if, you know, um, you're the leader, right? You're the Sherpa, right? And so you want people to like, you're building an audience, a following, uh, credibility. And even if all the topics are all over the place, if you have a clear statement that is like, yeah, it's all over the place. Cause guess what? It's complicated to get to this audience promise. You know what I'm saying? But at least if you have a place that you're going, even if all the paths are just crazy getting there, then people are like, well, at least she knows where she's taking us. You know what I mean? And, and it doesn't have to be like so specific, but it just generally needs to be like, people need to be able to go. Yeah, that that's what, that's what I'm talking about. So what's your, what's your audience promise? My audience promise. Oh my gosh. Off the top of my head. Um, well, my audience promise, actually, it's like right in the beginning. Uh, I say it at the beginning of the show because I do want to lay it out and because this is a new series. <laughs> so um, so we, uh, we help podcasters and YouTubers with vision become preeminent thought leaders in their industry. And um, we do that through helping them get there because you know what every podcaster's path's different like this interview I'm like this hot seat right now completely different from any of the others that I've just done because podcasters are creative they're leaders they've got vision uh and it's funny because most of the ingredients are the same to get there and you probably see this too you're like yeah I usually if there's a problem I usually solve it with a b c or d However, when you're dealing with each of these business leaders, how they incorporate it into their lives or why they would want to incorporate it can be different. So it changes the dynamic of how you deliver it to them. Does that make sense? And that's how, that's how a podcast is. And that's, that's how you can really get loyal people. Cause they're like, they know what to say to the next person. They're like, oh my gosh, you should listen to the show because it will help you blah. And if you can't say it, how could they say it? And you know, NPR and Edison, I I quote this every single episode, but like they did, and you probably heard me say it 12 times, but, um, they did, they did research on how do people find podcasts? Number one was web, uh, web search, which we'll talk about later. And number two, which I think probably battles for number one are referrals. And so Mm -hmm. empowering our, our audience to be able to refer us is really huge, but not Mm -hmm. only that they're going to be more loyal. If you have a really clear, um, you know, outcome that they can expect, but you can see like, even mine, it's not, 
you know, I'm not telling anybody they're going to get a certain number of listeners <laughs> or, you know, anything like that. It's just, this is where I want us all going. And there's a lot of pieces to it. So, mm -hmm. and then some days I wake up and I just want to talk about food. So there's that too. So <laughs> awesome. Well, was that helpful as far as talking about the who and the, and mm -hmm. um, the transformation? Okay, great. Um, have you found that as you are releasing episodes, getting, have you, you've gotten feedback that you've been able to make adjustments based on that feedback? What a good question. Um, I feel like the feedback I've mainly gotten is I'll get, I'll be talking to someone or, or they'll message me on Instagram or they'll email in and tell me. Oh, I really loved this episode. I don't really get feedback other than that. Um, I would love to get feedback other than that <laughs> of like, of, of tell me more about what you like. And I, I do, I do script every episode and I've been playing around recently of doing just more, I'll outline something and just like go on my weird little crazy tangents that I go on to and babble and all of the things. And that's what happened in my most recent episode that I got a ton of great feedback <laughs> from that. Like everyone loved the episode. I was like, is it the, is it the topic or is that I just like went like my normal self? Um, so well, my answer is yes, I, I get some feedback, but not a lot of feedback. Well, and even what you told me about that last episode, that's feedback. And what did you say? You said, oh, I need to do more on that topic. So that would be adjusting based on the feedback that you're getting, especially early on as you're building your community, it's your feedback is going to be, are they listening or are they not listening? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and you've seen it. Like when people go crazy over an episode, you're like, okay, more of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's, so that's really good that you were already, I mean, that's a great example of it just right there. So some more of that. How do you hope measure everyone watching on YouTube is enjoying my little dog in the background, like sitting in the darkness. <laughs> what? No deer. <laughs> no deer. He's graduated from living in our house to living on the farm. <laughs> yes. So I've, I've been on uh, zoom calls with Sam in the past and she lives in beautiful Hawaii and uh, loves animals. Like I think she shares a heart with the animals that are around her. And um, she had this totally. sweet little baby deer that was laying on a towel in the background for a while. <laughs> yeah, we, there was flood. My, my husband is a regenerative agriculture designer and uh, has multiple farms on Maui and there were all these floods on Maui and it killed the deer's mom. So we Aww. rehabilitated him. That's awesome. So let me ask you, how do you measure whether your audience is expanding? Like, how do you gauge that? I honestly do not check in on this as much as I should. Let's look at the numbers right now because I haven't <laughs> looked at this in a while. We um, we use Simplecast for um, for hosting, and they have very basic analytics. I could upgrade for more intense analytics, but we just use the the analytics of our. Um, podcast host platform. So it's just the basic downloads. Like if there are yeah. more downloads than, uh, yeah, you know, um, and I talk about this all the time too, where, you know, download numbers are good because, you know, even though there's no perfect way to measure engagement with podcasts, like everything's just kind of all over and you have audiences in different places, the downloads at least tell you are more people listening to this <laughs> than, yeah. than the one before. And so I think that that's really good that you've got a place to go to for that. So do you, uh, do you know what average, what the average podcast has in terms of weekly downloads? Well, I'm I know so that curious. in the first 30 days, it's 141, which per episode? Of, for each episode the average podcast has 141 downloads of that episode in the first 30 days, which I am like, that is a lot. Good job. Then. I was going to say that. I'm like, I'm not, I'm below average. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <no. laughs> well, and two, now that stats from, I, I can't remember if it's night. Uh, it was like early 2020, I believe. And we jumped from, I mean, I don't know when 
it just has grown so fast. I feel like it's just a flash that went by me, but it seemed like one day it was 550,000 podcasts and the next day it was 2 million, you know? So during the whole COVID thing, everybody started a podcast. So we went from, I was inviting people onto my show and they're like, what is a podcast? Like, I still don't understand why anybody would be on a podcast to, you know, a couple months later. And they're like, yeah, you know, everyone's like banging down the door, wanting to be on everybody's podcast. (laughs) So Um, so it's definitely grown and I would, I would guess that that stat, um, doesn't reflect the growth because there are a lot of, um, there's just a lot of new podcasts and that's not true. It's true for the launch, like the launch, you're going to get a huge surge. And then usually there's a big drop off and then you're building your momentum from there. So, but yeah, that's the statistic is 141. So unless it's been updated, but. I don't know. I, I just can't keep up. I, I feel like I need to feed just with the latest data on <laughs> podcasting, but, and, and in the past, I didn't even keep track of the data that well. So the fact that I can look it up now is amazing. Yeah. So, well, let's, um, okay. So we talked about the why we talked about your, why we talked about your, who, and I feel like I have a good idea of, you know, who's listening to your show. Who you want to listen to your show because not only are they going to enjoy the content, but they're potentially going to be part of your program. So you're thinking like, if I, if someone was in my program, I want to love them. And so, you know, what does that person look like? So that's, that's a really, really good um, place to start. So let's talk about things that you're doing that, you know, are working really well. What do you say, what would you say has been um, the most effective way that you've attracted listeners and viewers so far and way or ways. So if you have a couple um, posting on Instagram and in- interviewing people that share to their audience. Okay. That's awesome. So when they share with their audience, do they, are they all just Instagram or do you have a sense of what other outlets they might be using? Um, The only thing I can think of is if they're sharing uh, via email, but I don't, I don't, I have no idea if anyone's doing that. Okay. Awesome. One thing that you do really, really well that few, I almost never say this on this hot seat version is like you do your, your blog post. Amazing. Like that is always the number one thing. It's like, if you're going to do a podcast, be ready to do blog posts or don't do a podcast. Cause it goes back to that. I use a script every time. So oh, good. we just like convert that over to a blog post and yeah. So do you use a script when you do interviews? No. So we, we have our, we have our normal, like if I'm doing a scripted call then, or a scripted one where it's just me on there, we'll, we'll just move that over into a blog post. We have a different, um, template that we use for interviews. And it was one of my friends podcast with a really large audience. I saw what she was doing and I was like, I've never seen anyone else do that. I love what they do. And it's essentially you do the timestamp with the question or the topic, and then like a little blurb on what is talked about. Um, Cause you usually see people who do like an intro and then bullet points of what happens in the episode. And like, that's it. And I'm like, that's not actually useful, but I it totally copied friend. And I, I just love that. It's like, okay, this is the topic. This is like the general like description of, of what is in that topic and then moved on to the next one. So that's, we have two different styles depending on if it's an interview or not. I really, I, I really like your format. So if you're listening, make sure you go look up uh, Sam's blog and I'll give you the, the web address here at, at the end. But so, um, okay. So what's working are your, oh yeah. And you mentioned this, that you do have people on your show who are, are, um, clients who, who became clients. Uh, one thing and kind of back to, so I, I'm, I like being super transparent and super like I I try to be congruent, you know, like if I'm saying one thing, I want to do that. And, uh, so when it comes to content con my listeners always matter more than anything. Like, I feel like that's my ultimate client when I'm making a podcast. So, um, there was a time where I struggled with this whole, like, yeah, I invite people on my show who I think I could work with. I would love to work with them. Like they're my, I literally brought on people I thought would be dream clients. And, um, but however, if they didn't pass the, 
would this fulfill the audience promise? They, I wouldn't have them on my show. So I literally had people asking to be on my show and I'm just like, yes, sorry. (laughs) Like, no, you can't be on my show, (laughs) but I, you know, reverse. I also invited people I thought would be great clients onto my show. And I did not invite them to have a consultation with me (laughs) because I was like, you're kind of an ass. I would hate to work with you. (laughs) You know, Madonna, no, thank you. (laughs) But, you know, I also feel like the, by doing it the way that we do it, and it sounds like you're, you, you know, and I'd love to hear your feedback on this. Um, I, I just feel like how, you know, my actual life and my podcast life are kind of the same. Like I'm reaching out to the people I'd want to be with and work with the, I make, I'm full, you like, they're giving such great information that they're fulfilling my audience promise. You know, what is your view on the idea of having guests on your show that, you know, you want to work with eventually? Yeah. Okay. So where I'm at my business now, we're actually not looking for agency clients. Um, like maybe if I stumble upon someone that I'm obsessed with and, but like, I I'm trying to expand more, more on the mastermind online program side, more so than getting new clients. But that wasn't the case when I started when I started. And when I started, I also didn't know that that was a good tactic for getting clients until it just (laughs) happened. Um, so that was never a thought in my, my mind, but again, because I said, like, I only want to work with people I'm obsessed with. And I only want to have people on my podcast that I'm obsessed with that it, it just was a natural crossover. And I also want to say with this, oh, so like at first I was like, there was more of that crossover of client and guest. Now it's moving into, um, it hasn't really changed. It's just like, who am I obsessed with and who do I want on? And, um, the one thing that we're changing moving forward is prioritizing, um, inviting guests who are BIPOC, um, to help, uh, elevate melanated voices. So pretty much I'm, my intention for, I've had, I don't know, I've 15 guests on the show, maybe 20 guests on the show. And the primary, there's 80% white women. And, uh, so the intention going forward is, I mean, maybe the next 20 episodes, it'll just be, um, people of color and, um, uh, to be more aligned with the, my values in line with my audience's values and like the way that I would, I want to see the world changing. So mm-hmm. that's a change that's coming up for, um, the podcast. Okay. That's really cool. That's really cool. Okay. So I'm going to get a little more marketing-y, um, here. So would you say, uh, let me see, I actually I always have the, um, uh, the show page open, but how do you, do you have a pretty strong brand, like a visual brand identity for your show? Uh, kind of, I I haven't ever settled on a, a perfect, like we have our fonts, we have our colors that we use for the entire business, but I'm not in love with them. So it's always in the back of my mind that it will be changing. I don't know when, but (laughs) yes and no. (laughs) Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, Okay. Let's see. I, and you'll see, I'm taking notes and I say, let's see a lot of times I'm taking notes because we're preparing for the end of the show where I just want to make sure I listen and I've documented the different things that you're saying. So you'll just bear with me as I make another little note. Um, awesome. Okay. Let's okay. So, um, also have you mapped a social strategy for your, sh- for your show? For, I, one thing before I even ask that, I noticed that one thing that I love is when people use their podcasts to create great content for their brand. So you do that. You're like, Hey, here's my show. It's got content completely in alignment with what I'm doing for a living. And then it becomes, um, the content that you're using on social, obviously on your website, uh, And, but do you have like a mapped social media uh, strategy for what you're doing? So we have, um, I don't know if this counts, I wouldn't call it a map, but we have recurring tasks in our online project management um, space for every single week when the podcast goes out, it goes on. Okay. Earlier in the, earlier in the week, we have actually creating the Instagram post and the email copy. We have creating the image for Instagram. Um, We have it like auto posting to different social media networks. Um, And uh, 
when whoever is editing the because we have two different people on the team that um edit the episode depending on the week and the workload so she will translate into the blog on the website so it, it's all recurring tasks in asana so i don't know if that that counts as your map <laughs> i i totally count that as a map <laughs> okay, i mean there are simple maps and there are complex maps and so i i just think as long as you have like a strategy you know what you're doing um you know are you doing that as part of your I mean, i'm assuming it's just part of your outreach trying to get out in front of more people so that you can get more listeners true yeah and then we have our like our little side map for when we have um, people being interviewed, they get special images created, they get a special email with quotes and stuff. So that's like a little, a little side map. Awesome. <laughs> love it. Love it. Also, do you, are you part of other people's like, I know you don't like Facebook. This is, seems like a silly question, but I want to bypass it. Are you parts of groups that have shared interests that aren't you know, not podcasting, but like in the space where your ideal audience is and groups that they might join, do you go in there at all and community, like even so, Reddit or something like that, where you're converse, you no, know, having conversations? No, I like, I, I should be, I should be. Um, I just, it's something that I, like, I don't use Facebook, so I can never be consistent with it. Um, we have, I mean, we have a Facebook group for the podcast <laughs> and like, I, I'm like in there from time to time, but I'm like, it, I know it could grow. I know it could have better engagement if I was like, actually like used Facebook, <laughs> yeah. um, but I don't. So, I, well, and when you think no, about it, where you, you said it, your target audience there on Instagram, but I just wasn't sure if there was maybe a group or so I always want to ask that because no, there are, there are groups that I like Facebook groups that I like that I, when I'm in those weird time phases where I'm actually spending time on Facebook, I'll go into, but it's, it's not consistent enough that I actually, I don't know if it would pay off. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, and on social media, when you do post on social media, where do you send people to? Now I know on, link, on, in, on Instagram, it's, you know, see profile, of course, but, uh, as, as a, just, um, as a standard, where do you typically send people to when you're posting about an episode? I'm, I'm going to answer and I'm going to realize I need to immediately change this. <laughs> we'll send it to our simple cast site, which links out to all the different places that you can listen to. And I'm realizing that it should go to the post on our website. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually already, I mean, full disclosure, I knew the answer to that question. <laughs> I know. I know you did. You, you, you stopped me. You did your research. Yeah. <laughs> Are you in agreement with what my realization, right? I'm hoping. Always send people to your website. Yeah. I know if, that. If someone wants you on their show and they say, what's your podcast link? Always send them to your website because you're in marketing, you're branding yourself with everything that you do. So, um, are you there? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, you froze for a second. So you're back. You're oh no, back. it was me writing notes in the corner. Oh. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. Well, good. Okay. So, um, okay. So that's my, that, um, I love talking with you. I definitely see that you and I talking, it's a good thing that we have extra time because I feel like I have the same thing where I'm like, oh, I've got more to say. And oh, this is a great conversation. So, but we did make it through our why, who, and what. Um, and I think there's just a lot that you're doing really well. I love your passion for the people that you're serving through your podcast. What is something that you feel stands between where you are now and your vision to build an audience for online programs and continue that create creative expression and joy that you find in podcasting? Like what's standing between you and what you see in the future for your podcast, which is probably the that building that big audience? Um, I mean, there's little things of, of having, I've been always consistent in creating, putting episodes out every single week. We, we batch a lot of interviews into, so we can get them out. But there's sometimes when we, like I haven't prepared an episode for the week. Um, 
it hasn't happened in a while, but there, there's always this, now I have to do this. Now I have to, uh, put together the script and actually like put on makeup and record it. <laughs> and like, uh, that sometimes feels, um, draining, not necessarily draining. It's just like you, it's something that because it, it's this constant machine moving forward, I, like I have to make sure that the, the raw material is there. Um, I don't think that's an actual hold, hold back because I, I'm not planning on ever missing one. So it's not actual problem, but like the feeling behind it, I guess. Um, I am so happy with the amount of audience that we've had. I'm but I feel like it should be way more. <laughs> right. So and even I though like, I don't this... have like a solid, um, I like, I, I understand why it's not more. I've never done actual research behind like how seven ways to grow your podcast. So I'll be like, <laughs> just posting on social media. That sounds about right. Um, well, this hot seat so should I, help I, you. <laughs> I don't actually know what the blocks are because I, but I, I do feel like the audience growth has been slow. Okay. And I should ask you this one I was asking. Apparently, according to your <laughs> what, what is, um, what is like, what, what is your audience size? Um, you so say? Total, total downloads, um, has of all time has been 5,200 people or 5,200 downloads in the last seven days. It's been 113 downloads. Um, the week before was 159 downloads. So I would say in the 125 range is the audience size. Um, okay. Oh, I mean, it tells me unique listeners in the last seven days, 91 people. And like, I think sit down and I think of a group of 91 people. I'm like, damn, that's awesome that I have that many people sitting in a room and listening to me every single week. But I'm like, I kind of feel like it should be more. And I've heard of, of people, people's podcasts that I'm like, I, I think your podcast sucks and their audience size and well, yeah. disappointing. <laughs> well, so, um, so with what we've talked about so far, I'd like to go into kind of my take on things. Mm -hmm. If that, if I have your permission to share my thoughts, um, but before mm -hmm. I do, is there anything else that you wanted any other questions before we go into that? No. Okay. I'm ready. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So before I go through again, I'm going to talk about what, what I really, there's just a few of the things I think you're strong at. I think you're strong in a lot of areas, some areas, I think that there's opportunity. That'll be the second. And then we'll have a minute just to visit about that. And then I'll do my, if I'm the boss of you, this is what I would make you do. Um, but before I do, I just want to say there are there are four P's to preeminence. Um, number one is to know your purpose, which we talked about. That's your why and uh, know your people, your audience, and really dial in on your messaging for your audience, uh, and optimize your promotion of your show. So it goes to, you know, where is my audience? What do they want to hear? What kind of content can they consume quickly? Because everyone's in a hurry and the, and the posts fly by really fast. Uh, and then also, earning proceeds or profit to pay for help so that you're not having to do it out yourself. You know, we're talking about preeminence today, but pr the proceeds play a big part in it. Like we talked about at the beginning. So, I mean, would you agree? Those are like the four parts. Like if you had all four of those things, you would have like a hit show true or no. Yes. Like, I think okay. So. Okay. <laughs> Purpose people, I'm not promotion the expert proceeds. Here, Tiffany. <laughs> it's true. Can we, okay. That's all. That's great. I, pr I, promise you those four things, if you've got them, you've got it, your show is going to crush it. And then if you're famous, you don't need at least three of them. So, um, so first I just want to start out what I, what really stood out to me. Um, I, um, let's see here. I make notes while I'm listening. So let me just take a minute. So the first thing is your content. I really feel like when I'm listening to your show, and I'm going to focus on the interviews, um, that when I'm listening to your show, I really feel like it's girl time, you know? So I, I was really happy when you said that your audience are females, because it really, that's what it feels like. It's like, um, you know, get me a mimosa. I want to hang out, put my slippers on, you know, and listen to how my life is going to be transformed, you know? Uh, and then there's also 
really good tips as well. So it's not just like, la la la, everybody's going to be happy. And it's like, okay, so this is how you write a book, <laughs> you know, that kind of Which thing. Which episode did you listen to? I'm so curious. The, the attorney who talked about writing a book. So I listened. Okay. Yeah. I got great feedback on that episode too. So awesome. good one to choose. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Um, and then you ask great questions and then you also know enough about your topic that you're able to provide value as well. So that's, those are always really good things. Um, your website is so pretty. Uh, I feel like it speaks right to, um, it, it's obvious to me what you're trying to do for people. Like I felt like I went there, I get it. I know what to expect. Um, and then, you know, the podcast, the blog pages, like I said, I love the format, uh, you integrated. I love that you integrate questions that people ask you into your solo episodes. I thought that was super awesome. Uh, and then of course, Sam, I've never talked to you and not felt like I exactly like you are you all the time. So I love that, you know, listening to the podcast is like, yep that's Sam, you know, and it's great. It's just delightful. Um, people, you know, nobody wants to have somebody not act like themselves. So I just think that that's warm and, um, kind of, and gritty. I like that. It's not like super frou-frou. You're also like, you know, curse and things. So <laughs> it's just, it's just real and free, 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 free flowing. So that's really awesome. Um, any feedback about that before I go on to areas of opportunity? I just want to sit and marinate in that for a minute. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I feel all those same things. And my, the one thing I wrote down was um, make sure I'm actually sending people to my website. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you, you highlighting, you loving the website so much. I'm like, and I'm not sending people there. <laughs> okay. So at areas of opportunity, that's the first thing on my list <laughs> is always send people to your website. Um, and then also, um, oh, and your YouTube, like I went to YouTube, I found your YouTube videos. Cause I think it was linked in like Facebook or something. Uh, I love your thumbnails. So just to even look at your channel, it's like, they're all like super fun. And I like how there's all these different pictures. Um, I don't know why I'm obsessed with these YouTube thumbnails where people aren't smiling. So I'm like, man, I need to make myself some YouTube thumbnails where some of them I'm like, hmm. Well, you know what? It was, it was from when I was um, one of my first marketing jobs. Uh, one of the copywriters who was interest, interest, like always doing research on the latest things. And uh, I would do this one time he was like, always choose an image for an email that is, uh, is either shocking or like, like they're doing a weird face or like their mouth is open. Like there's, there's something where there's like an action in there because it's, <laughs> it has a higher click rate. And I, I've kind oh, of thought of that podcast that's good. too. <laughs> well, I, I believe that. And you did a good job of doing that very, very well. The, my favorite YouTube videos, and it's so hard. I can't just watch stuff. You know, I'm watching, you know, real estate investing videos. And all I can think of is like, oh, I love how they, you know, I love that edit where they came in from here and, you know, I'm always, you know, learning from them. And, well, and one of the so, things has been the, the thumbnails I've been obsessed with. So the thumbnails are like a total vanity thing because my whole idea behind, uh, doing, uh, YouTube, the YouTube one is like, these are the uncut episodes. So we don't do any editing for them. Oh, wow. uh, like I, I don't like, I sometimes like I'm not wearing makeup and I'm just wearing like a t-shirt and like the lighting's not good. And it's kind of blurry. And I'm just like the, in my mind, the more important thing, and this is what I, I really believe the more important thing is the consistency and showing up every single time. Like, even if it's not, put together, even if it's not your A plus, like I I'd rather get those out. So the, the thumbnails are my attempt to like cover how uncut most of them <laughs> actually are. <laughs> I love it. Well, and one thing I, sh I actually, I thought I put on there and I totally forgot till you just said it, but I, I think one of the things you are super strong at is your commitment to consistency. I mean, consistency yeah. really is key. I was listening to a podcast. Actually, I was listening to an audio book by a guy who he does real estate syndications. And one of the first things that he did to build credibility, because I mean, as a real estate syndicate, you go out and you find projects and then people invest in it. So they're investing all this money and they have no say. And so you have to convince them like, Hey, I'm not going to steal your money and go to Paris. Like you have to, so his method, his first go-to is start a podcast. And mm -hmm. in the first few months, he did it once a month and he was dissatisfied with the number of people he was getting in his audience. And so he went to every day. He was like, 
Did I have time for that? No. Did I do it? Yeah. You know, so I love <laughs> listening to you. And- <laughs> note the jump there from once a month to every day like oh he says like but you know what the more that I'm out the more that I see people who do just incredible things they take massive action that is the only difference between them and anybody else and so even for me I mean I basically I I use my podcast to test I'm always testing if I have a new series it means I'm trying something out. That is code from me Uh, because for me, I am so, I I always said this, like I'm always the vice president. I'm always the one who's like, there's somebody that I want to lift up and make famous. Mm -hmm. I really don't care. Like I have videos with me with a towel on my head. Like it's just the way that I roll in. Um, usually I have makeup on and stuff, but, but at the end of the day, um, our commitment to taking massive action will separate the people who are going to crush it. And then the people who, and it's okay to be in the middle. Like, it's okay to say, this is the life. You know, I talked to another podcaster and he was like, I'm, I mean, I want to like the changes that I'm going to tell you at the end, those are minor changes. It's not going to like upheave your entire world. And usually when someone has a podcast, they have a day job. And so they're like, how can I do one more improvement? to make a big difference without upheaving my whole life. And yes, doing it once a day would be an upheaval never makes my list of three things. <laughs> so, but it, I only, it's, I, I only brought it up. Just something to say, like, with the about. trust thing too, is like, I, I always go back to, you hear this all the time. Like marketing is always about relationships. It's just about creating relationships with other people and trust being this like we need that in human relationship. We Mm -hmm. need that in, especially for my audience, especially for the people that I want to work with. It's like, we only want to work with people that we love. We want to be like, have, have our audience be people we'd want to hang out with. So if, if you're, if you think that your, your girlfriend is going to like drop everything and come hang out with you when you haven't like responded to any of her messages in a year, then like, I mean, come on. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that's awesome. So YouTube thumbnails, love them. Um, and then, um, but I couldn't find the link to your YouTube channel on your website. So either I couldn't find it or it's it's probably not there. there. I mean, they (laughs) should be, they should be in the, what's supposed to happen is they should be in the individual blogs. Okay. Are they not? I recommend adding them to your header or footer. And that's kind of another thing is as your a podcast, podcasts are growing more and more into communities, right? And so, and when we're talking about marketing being relationships, why to me, if I'm going to have a podcast, I need to work on building my community. And so part of that means that your community might be looking for you on Instagram. So they're, they found your website and they might be like, could you please make it easy for me to get to Instagram? <laughs> Cause that's really where I want to where I want to watch you, you know? And so I would just suggest, you know, taking a look at your website, making it really easy for them to follow you on social, making it really easy for them to find your, your YouTube. Because I mean, for myself, we have people that have podcasts, but I don't listen to their podcasts because I have to watch the video because it's something I want my husband also to see. And so Mm -hmm. therefore I need it on video, but for myself, I might want a podcast. So when I hit content and I can't find one or the other, I find someone else. That's what I do. And so as a brand, you have those channels. So just either make a page to say like, Hey, join our community. And then they're like somehow incorporate it so that they can easily consume in a way that fits them. Does that make sense? Yeah. And these are the, like, I'm not the boss of you on these ones. These are just like little things that I saw. No, I love it. No, I, I just, I think I, I always think about the idea of the, the cobblers whose yeah. kids have been yeah. used. I try my hardest to not have that be us as a digital marketing agency, but it's still like falls through the the cracks. So, well, the nice thing is, is you do have a team and you do have, it's a sauna that you use, right? So it's just a matter of adding a line yes. to a sauna. Yes. <laughs> so I'm no, not asking That's you why I'm like writing do it. it down. So I was like, okay, <laughs> delegation like, is a thing that can happen. <laughs> yes. Yes. And so then that, that leads me to this again. I'm not the boss of you. If you do this, if you don't, I think it's going to help, but, um, it's easy enough, especially if you delegate, but as you're, it looks like you push your social content to Instagram and then 
that Instagram get post gets republished to other like Twitter yeah. and things like that. Yeah. So everything's got a link to Instagram. So I don't know what the fees, if you have like a social scheduler that, um, you know, you could even set up some automation where that RSS feed and all it is, is like a, Hey, a new episodes out, you know, yeah. and it goes to Twitter. Cause you hate Twitter or it goes to Facebook. Cause you hate Facebook, but you're posting other things too. And so if, if all it is, is like a direct link, ideally to your, you know, blog post, <laughs> then, yeah. um, you know, then no, that's, a, that's a good point. I, that's like one of those things that I think about when I'm like burnt out at the end of a period of like, I could be doing like, ideally it wouldn't just be like these auto posts from Instagram, but I, I'm, I, I lean on the, I can't be, I, I'm fine with like the B minus of some of these things, but what you're saying in terms of changes are, are not these something that would um, be hard to implement and put in place. It's just taking the time to, to make those it, shifts. Yeah. It's an, it's a, it's probably a couple minutes for somebody who knows yeah. how to do it. And then you never have to think about it again. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So then forevermore, you know, if you set it up to your website, RSS feed versus your podcast RSS feed, then it's not yeah. going to your, you know, your, um, host, it's going to go to your, cause your WordPress, I'm guessing. Is that right or no? Squarespace. Oh, Squarespace. So I'm sure that you can do that with Squarespace too. So where the RSS feed goes out. But anyway, so again, a little bit of time up front and then set it and forget it, I would say, since those aren't priorities, but that would be a better B minus than having it go to Instagram. <laughs> Love it. If that makes sense. <laughs> okay. Um, and okay. And then also just kind of for SEO and you probably know this too, but on your Instagram account, I would just on your profile, put your website, not the link tree. So there's that. <laughs> so any, any, that's so I'm going to get to my, if I was the boss of you, you could ignore all the rest of it. But if you just did one thing, I'm going to get to that. Do you have any questions though, up till now? I feel like I've probably exhausted you at this point. <laughs> I'm wondering if there's like, cause Linktree is just so much easier than it, just being able to say like link and bio for various things and making mm -hmm. sure all of the, Oh, true. You know, like that's, that, that's like the reasoning behind the link tree is just having the different buttons on there. There's, there's gotta be, I know that you can mask link trees. I know that you can, there's probably different platforms that do the same thing, but are like technically hosted on your website. Um, I'm not, I, I, I'm not sure the solution. I, I just really, I do really like having like the multiple button things, yeah. multiple call, calls to action. Well, and I would be surprised and I don't know Squarespace that well, other than I'd be surprised if they don't have some kind of template that is similar to Linktree because they <laughs> it's, it's in their best interest to keep people within the Squarespace world versus a, you know, cause to them, Linktree is really a competitor more so. And, mm -hmm. and then setting up a rule where if it's a mobile device, it comes up on that. And if it's, I guess, no matter what you'd want it to come up on that, but I don't know since you, since, uh, Instagram is your social media of choice. I just recommend optimizing your, yeah. how you do that somehow. So there's, there's probably a hundred different options for that, but I just would, something. yeah, yeah. I would just think about that a little bit, but, um, okay. So anything else about that before we get on to the last number three? No, thank you so much for all your feedback. <laughs> You're I welcome. I wrote what was, it down. <laughs> uh, I know I should just like, I actually, um, should just send you this, um, outline, but okay. So if I could have you do one thing to see the absolute quickest results, um, the easiest thing. Okay. There's three things, but I want you just to pick one. I want, I want <laughs> you to pick thing, actually not. <laughs> No, like, honestly, I always say like one thing, but I, I want you to, I always think three choices is magic. So if you just picked one of the three choices and just do that, and then you could always like make the list of the three things and then someday do another one. I just think if you did any one of these three things that you would see impact early on, number one is just you know, get your brand tightened up, you know, just so that you are confident in it. It represents exactly what 
you are setting out to do. That's a harder thing. So it's like the hardest of the three things. So that's why I'm like, I don't, you don't have to do that and you could still get a lot of results. But I just think- What what do you mean by that? Get your brand tightened up. What does that actually mean? So as a marketer, you know that- brand means not only like it made images. So like, you know, your logo, your, you know, your fonts, but you said you don't like them. So when I asked that question, that is really my indicator. Mm-hmm. Like, is your brand put together? No. Okay. So put your mm-hmm. brand together. <laughs> you know, if you had said, yes, I love my brand. It exactly represents what I'm doing, what I want to do. I would have not brought it up. It got mm-hmm. added as soon as you said that. <laughs> so, okay, um, cool. But, I but sure I, if there was like a specific thing you're reacting to, I was no. like, okay, <laughs> no, your website, your website looks gorgeous. So, um, no, I love it. I just, it just, yeah. As a marketer, it just is like, ah, oh, you don't like your brand. Okay. Um, but besides, now like that's, it. I love it. it's B minus so, right now. <laughs> so that I would, if I was the boss of the world, I wouldn't make you do that, but I would just make that be in the back of your mind. Like you should really love it. And, you know, maybe go on a retreat or something where you just get to really fall in love with your brand. Um, but one thing that I think would be really good, especially if your biggest goal is to build this audience for your mastermind, for these courses, things like that is having a strong call to action, um, kind of a next step. So people are listening to your show and then you're done and they're like, now what do I do? (laughs) You know? Um, and so being able to go, okay, Um, you know, you're about to listen to the show by the time you're done, you know, here's my, you know, everyone who listens to the show, they're going to use their, their, uh, business and it's going to help them fulfill their purpose. And, you know, everyone's going to be empowered. And, and then, um, and once you feel like that, you know, make sure you go to our website and you can either sign up for the free this, or if you want to get in our mastermind and you want to know more about it, do this, you know? So there's like two things that they can do when they're like, "Ah," you know, instead of having to hunt you down, like you want to make it a little bit easier. So calls to action. Number one for the lead magnet right now, it's the issue. (laughs) What was that? I don't like my lead magnet right now. So that's like the, one of the things. Okay. So as soon as you have a lead magnet that you love, then I would say push this to the front because as you are, you know, like you hate Facebook, so you don't really have groups. Um, and but people are going to your website. They're going to be finding these tapas on the web- website. So as you're collecting, like, as they're getting there, you can be collecting that and just building community that way. So you're not having to do it on platforms that you don't even like. So, and then also on air. So on air, having that call to action is really um, helpful as well. In fact, um, interview valet, they're like the top uh, agency for getting people onto other people's shows. And they train even the guests that that's what they do. They, at the end where they're allowed to like share what they do, they always have like, there's one e- actually they have a, a, a easy, a medium and a heart, a like more advanced version of a call to action. And the way that Tom Schwab uh, explains it, it's like, you know, someone just listened to you. You want them to, you know, you want to build this credibility You're building this audience And, you know, you don't want to make your best clients jump through a bunch of hoops by going through your funnel. You want them just to get straight to you. And then the people who are like, I'm not really ready for that. I haven't been making money yet. You want them just to get on the list because they want to stay informed. So you're really doing them a favor by doing it. So, Um, and then, so number one, the brand, number two, strong call to action. Next step. Number three is to craft your audience promise, because I feel like you are going to have a lot more confidence with. Um, you're, it's, it seems like it's going to kind of constrict what you're doing. Cause it's like, oh, I'm naming what I'm doing, but really what it does, it gives you a lot more freedom, but it gives that freedom purpose. It's like, see, we're doing all these things. However, it's all getting you here. So I think that even if you started saying that at the beginning of your show, I think you're going to see more uh, referrals. It gives you words for your peop- for your listeners to share with their friends to say, oh, listen to the show because you're going to da, 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 da. So, and referrals being such a big part of it, you know, you've already nailed the blog post. So the next thing is the referral. So, so that, that's what I have. So do you have any comments or questions about any of that? It seems pretty straightforward. The audience promise will be like the most interesting thing. Um, but I like it. I like the idea of it. Um, 
No, I don't think you have questions. Thank you so much. Jim. So <laughs> oh, so you're <laughs> so <laughs> good. Good. Well, and to those of you who are still listening, I know we, um, I, I went on and on as soon as I start sharing ideas, I feel like I just kind of lose my mind and, and get crazy <laughs> about it. But uh, as you are listening to this, be sure that you go and check out Business is a Magical Practice. You can look it up on your favorite podcasting platform or go to thedirtyalchemy.com. Is there anywhere else that people can find you that you want to uh, share? Um, yeah, I mean, come come join us on Instagram. It is at the Dirty Alchemy. Thedirtyalchemy.com is the website. Um, I love my podcast, so definitely come listen unless you're a muggle in which you're not invited. Um, <laughs> what is a muggle? Yeah. <laughs> Have you never read Harry Potter? <laughs> so bad. No? <laughs> or saw any of the, video, the movies? Okay, everyone knows what a muggle is. It's like, okay, in Harry Potter, there's the, the people who are magical and they go to Hogwarts and they have magical powers and then everyone else are called muggles. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, maybe since I don't, if you don't know what a muggle is, you might be a muggle. Is that what that is? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe. I pick no. So don't, don't hate on me, everybody for not knowing that my husband just popped in and he has watched Harry Potter. So I just, you know, I make sure I'm related to cool people since, you know, I'm probably was making some spreadsheet at the time that he watched it. probably watch Harry Potter tonight <laughs> with your husband. He'll love it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I really appreciate you for taking this time. Is there anything else, Sam, that you would like to add before we wrap? Um, no, I'm just really grateful for your time and for the opportunity to connect with you and talk to everyone who's listening right now and um, watching me be in epic shame around not sending people to my website. Um, no, <laughs> no shame. No shame. This is I'm a kidding. safe place. This kidding, is a safe kidding, place. Kidding. And honestly, like that's my whole vision is like, you would be surprised. I talked to so many podcasters and everybody faces really similar issues. What you're telling me, it is so calm. Like what, what we've, you know, dug up here in our conversation completely. There are so many people who are going to relate. I hear this so much. And so I feel like number one, I feel like everyone's got, I always say we're shooting all over ourselves, like with all these things we should be doing, but usually it's just a matter of changing one or two things. That's going to create momentum. And once that momentum's created, you just change one more little thing and then there's more momentum and that's how you build audiences. So um, I really appreciate you coming and being vulnerable and sharing these things. Um, I don't want you for sure to feel shame, but just feel like you're, you're taking action. Like that takes courage. And so there's nothing, nothing to worry about as long as that's what you're doing. So I appreciate you for being here too. So awesome. thank you so much, Tiffany. Thank you, Sam. And everybody who's listening, don't be average, be brave, take action and make magic happen. Thanks for listening. <laughs>